So the iPhone 11 is the best phone you've ever laid your eyes on. Don't lie to me. You know it's the truth. It's the most glorious thing to ever grace or come out of the Apple camps. Hands down, six months later with the iPhone 11, let's go. So what is up, guys? Nick here. Hope you got the sarcasm in the beginning of that video. Obviously, the iPhone 11 is not the best phone for everybody, but it's one of the best for a lot of of people. I think that you really can't go wrong, you know, for many on this device. We'll begin with my six months experience on the body. Okay, so six months later with the body for the iPhone 11, the favorite things about this phone is just how solid the thing feels on the day to day. It's got a really solid feel to it, nice thunk, no creaks and cracks on this thing. And six months later, very enjoyable phone in terms of overall build. Uh, yes, I will say it's a pretty big phone though. So if you're used to something like 6S, 7, 8, this thing is monstrous at 6.1 inches and very wide too. It's 8.3 millimeters thick as well. So this is a lot bigger, wider, taller, all that stuff. Yes, over the 6S, 7, 8, those devices. Overall, I gotta say though, I like that it's very sturdy, very durable. It just feels very well put together. And I like that it's IP68 dust and water resistant. So iPhone 11 is a win. And when it comes to the body and the design, in my personal opinion, after six months using it. Moving on to the display of the iPhone 11. LCD liquid retina display. Yes, I know a lot of people don't like that marketing because it's just an LCD display, right? Well, not really. It's one of the better LCDs on any phone out there. Gets very bright. Definitely has true tone, which not many LCD panels out there give you. Yes, you have dark mode, which is pretty awesome. And even though this is, you know, an LCD panel, dark mode is still very enjoyable on this phone as well. So don't feel like, you know, I get an iPhone 11, I don't got OLED, but pixels aren't turning off. I don't get good dark mode. Yes, you do get good dark mode for the iPhone 11. It's pretty darn good. But, you know, being this lower resolution, you will notice that it's not as sharp if you compare it side by side, the text to other smartphones. But still, I mean, very legible, very clear text. Um, it's just not quite as sharp as something like an 11 Pro. Um, I don't think it really matters for most iPhone 11 buyers, however. Now, six months later with the software, we don't have to talk long about this iOS 13.4 on here, pretty much 14 is coming. Yes, you're gonna get several more years of updates and it's been excellent. You know, having that better software in the camera department uh, that really goes great with this phone because usually you had to get the iPhone 11 Pro to get, you know, or the more premium phone to get better features. But this time around, no, you really do get the best features here as well. The 16 by nine aspect ratio, the wide angle comes on here. If we go over to video settings, you can go to 4K, HD, all that stuff right here. Excellent video quality, excellent front facing camera as well on here. So yeah, you do have great software features on this phone, very similar to that of even the iPhone 11 Pro, which is definitely the more premium phone in the lineup. So really like how the iPhone 11 definitely didn't skimp on the software stuff. It's definitely all there. Grid of icons, side to side, not much widget support here that might improve in 14. Solid, solid software. One of the key reasons people are still buying iPhone 11. Also definitely pretty good video performance. Yeah, the notch does cut out a little bit of the content over here on the left. But if we go ahead, we can go into up to HD 60 on this particular video, but you can stream really good quality video on here. Also very loud speakers. Now that it's March 20 or it's April 2020 now already, and there's rumors of a 2020 iPhone SE edition coming. No chance of that really getting muffled or anything like that. So do love the audio performance of the iPhone 11. In addition to that, yeah, there's no headphone jack, but at this point, doesn't really matter. The iPhone 11 has some great Bluetooth performance, so just get you a pair of cheap Bluetooth headphones and rock out with the iPhone 11. Next up, I do wanna cover quickly the battery life. Now, there's not much to talk about other than the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max have better battery life in my experience. This one's still hanging around 100% after six months. Really have to say that the iPhone 11's battery life, 1.5 days every single time for me. The only time I really drain this thing down is if I'm going hard on the camera, 4K 60, stuff like that. And I could see people not getting through a day if you're heavy gaming on this phone 
all day, but I'm talking browsing the web, reading some news articles, you know, doing some quick Instagram posts, doing some Twitter, doing some YouTube, you know, maybe even doing a couple photos, a few videos. You're getting through a day and a day and a half easy on this phone. So definitely extremely strong battery life, still not beating the 11 Pro and Pro Max, but it's up there, it's very good. Six months later, one thing I'm only kind of missing about the iPhone 11 is that it doesn't have like the smoothest display. A lot of phones are getting 90 Hertz, they're getting 120 Hertz, and some people say, well, I don't really see it that much. Well, yeah, no. If you compare it side by side to a 90 Hertz or a 120 Hertz, there is a noticeable difference. You just kind of got to look for it. But the iPhone is really smooth at 60 Hertz, However, ProMotion display on the iPad is way smoother looking than the iPhone's display. So just go look at a ProMotion iPad, look at the iPhone, that's what's coming to the next iPhone. So definitely miss that on the iPhone 11. No 5G here either, but it's still an infant technology. It will be coming out on many more phones, maybe even later this year with the upgrade to this phone in the iPhone 12. But one area where this one really doesn't fall short is the cameras. I think these are the best cameras at this price point you're gonna get on a phone. They have great video quality. They have great overall you know, software processing with the HDR. You can argue the Pixel might beat this thing in the photo quality, but I would say that for having the better video quality, it's the better overall package here. And yes, Samsung's Galaxy S20 is very good as well, but still, the video, I think, is beating out that phone as well. So with that being said, the cameras on here are just fantastic, specifically the video, just really good stuff, really good apps for video, really good apps for video editing as well, and it's just super easy to use this software. It's just butter. So yes, the cameras are probably key reason to still buy iPhone 11, and six months later, even when this SE 2020 launches, this camera still system is probably still gonna be better than that. So it's not like you're making a bad decision if you decided I wanna get an iPhone 11 right now or I'm ordering one this week. And that brings me on to storage. Since we're talking about cameras, it will take up some storage. So if you are gonna be doing a lot of photos, consider getting yourself the iPhone 11 with the 128 gigs minimum. It's only $50 more and uh, sometimes you can find them on a deal. So. I really like how the iPhone 11 though gives you a lot of storage for cheaper than even the starting price of the iPhone 11 Pro. Me, you can see right here, 64 gigs. I haven't used all of it, so I'm still good here. And if you're not a heavy, heavy user of your phone, you'll be fine with the 64. Face ID on this phone has been pretty reliable overall. I missed it because uh, the camera was in the way, but definitely pretty reliable performance. Very good on different angles as well. So. I wouldn't worry much about the face unlock. Very convenient to use this. This is why the notch is there. So yeah, I would still like it to be in the display, but we're not quite there yet. But the face ID, definitely a good reason for having a notch because it works very well and pretty much every time. I really most like face ID when it comes to apps that authenticate with it. It really is easy. If you got grease on your fingers from eating your french fries or whatever, you're good to go. You could still unlock it. And one thing I really like about the iPhone 11 is that it has this haptic press. Now, I don't like that the Pro and Pro Max got rid of 3D Touch because it makes them feel less premium, in my opinion, than 10s Max, for example. But having this on here is nice because the 10R, when it originally launched, didn't have any way to go ahead and do these shortcuts. Now, it also has these, but definitely like that this phone doesn't you know, skimp out on the shortcuts. And overall performance of this phone, you've seen this thing rock out many times when it comes to, you know, speed test, beating a lot of phones on the channel or at least hanging right there with them. So check out some of the various speed tests I've done on this phone if you wanna know more about the performance. But it can handle pretty much any game on the App Store. It's extremely smooth in the day-to-day -day performance. Also, applications fly through. Only issue I do have with iPhone 11 is if you're in multiple apps, you can be in YouTube, for example. Let's go to YouTube here. You can be in YouTube, for example, watch, be watching a video, come out to go do something really quick, come back, and on YouTube, your video will just stop playing or have to reload. It's, it's just because it has lower amount of RAM at four gigs. Kind of annoying sometimes, it happens. But I would say as an overall conclusion, the performance is top notch. And another great thing about the iPhone 11 is just the multiple colors this thing comes in. You know, you have purple, green, yellow, white, black, red, lots of different colors here for this phone to really help you get the phone that's perfect for you. And I really do like that. Now, I don't think these colors are quite as nice as the 10R. The 10R does give you uh, a little bit nicer color options, in my opinion. They just look a little bit more vibrant than the ones on the iPhone 11. 
But overall, you know what, the 11's not bad either. So in conclusion, a sturdy, rock solid, well-built phone with excellent cameras on the rear, excellent battery life, excellent software support for a long time. It's not hard to see with that $699 price point why this is one of the hottest selling phones on the market today. And it's still selling pretty well, even with what's going on right now. And I would say that if you are looking for an iPhone right now, you're just not gonna wait until September to see if the phones get delayed or whatever. This is still a good option, a very good option. And I have no problem still recommending the iPhone 11 after my six months later experience. The only thing you're missing out on is no OLED display, a little bit weaker of a sharpness. And yeah, there's a lot of Android phones with sharper displays, OLED, but they don't run five year long software support like this phone does right here. They also don't have better video cameras and photo cameras usually. So there is a lot to be said, even though the hardware on some competing phones looks so much better on paper. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know your experience if you have the iPhone 11. I will catch you all in the next episode. Stay safe out there. Nick here and peace.